Ladies and gentlemen, this WBU World Title fight is fought under the auspices of the next National Boxing Control Commission. Its chairman and ring physician, Dr. Peter Natani, and its executive director, Mr. Stanley Christodoulou. For the WBU, the ring supervisor, Morris Owen, and our judges tonight, Howard Goldberg, Elf Bukwana, and Sinton Sikaletsi, all from here, South Africa. Our referee for the next 12 rounds, Daryl Ribbink of Durban. And our timekeeper tonight, Danny Litchfield. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing to follow for the WBU Super Bantamweight title. Introducing the principals on my left, out of the red corner, he is the challenger wearing the blue and white trunks. He weighed in at 55.15 kilograms. His fight record, 25 fights, 2 draws, 2 losses, 21 wins, 6 by knockouts. Heading all the way from Linmeyer Gauteng, Anton Gilmore. Here's the current super bantamweight champion in the blue corner wearing the white, blue and red trunks. He weighed in at 55 kilograms, his fight record, 15 contests, 15 wins, 6 by knockout. The current undefeated super bantamweight champion of the world in his first title defense, Cassius, Mr. Shy Guy, Beloy. <laughs> I've given you my instructions. I want a good, clean fight. You listen to me at all times, okay? May the best man win. Shake hands. Thank you. Cassius Beloy in his first defense of a title he won from Frankie Toledo back in November. Coming in. And Steve, our records are showing 14 and 0. We'll go along with the South African 15 and 0. Because we got the bell here for round number one. Both fighters in orthodox stance. It's sort of unusual lately. I don't know if you've noticed this, not to get off the track as we start our title fight. I, invariably, every card that I've announced lately, I've had at least one lefty-righty matchup. Mm -hmm. It seems, uh, seems as if there are more and more southpaws. Except at heavyweight. There are never many at heavyweight. Where is Jazzy Ah, there you go. White, white shorts with the blue stripe. Anton Gilmore, the multicolored stripe. The champion, Cassius Beloy, who eats a right-hand lead in close from Gilmore. Referees are Daryl Ribbing. And Arnie, the first thing you notice with Cassius Beloy, the man is 5'11", which for a 122-pounder is really remarkable. The funny thing is, Gilmore is a fairly tall 122-pounder also, but he looks dwarfed by Beloy. Kind of makes you think of Sandy Sapp. Yeah. No surprise that Beloy is going to want to stay on the outside, establish the jab, and keep the fight at long range. Right. Except the punching power, Beloy, although he has only five knockouts, really banged up Frankie Toledo in their title fight. Gilmore, six knockouts and 21 wins. Not the set for punching power on his part. His last fight this past November. And here's a name for you. He beat Mark Wendinan. Matiti, who happened to be best man at your wedding. He was, he was, but uh, now nah, he was actually the usher. <laughs> and he won an eight round decision. He was up to 126 pounds for that fight. Of course, coming in today, the super bantam weight limit of 122. Good luck, right combination drops in there as we're approaching the one minute mark here in round number one. Of course, scheduled for 12 for the BU super bantam weight title. Nice left drops in by Gilmore. It's, it's early, Arnie, but I'll tell you, judging by the first two minutes, the fight is going the way you figure. Gilmore has to apply the pressure. But Beloy looks like he's going to have plenty of counter-punching opportunities, some of which right there, or right hand, some of which he's taking advantage of. Interesting today, although I know that you have some question marks about the BU as a established governing body, but have there ever been, in your recollection, world title fight with two South Africans fighting each other? That's a good question. I have to think about that. I, nothing comes to mind. I guess there have been about 10 or 12 or 14 South African world champions over the years. If you count all the organizations. I think Ring Magazine had an article on South African champions. We did. It was a story on Phil Holiday, as a matter of fact. One of the uh, most exciting South African world champions right now. The, the country just is producing so many great fighters. Stop! Not a bad first round as we go back to the corner for the challenge for Anton Gilmore. Certainly seemed as busy for both fighters. I don't think you've ever seen a slow super point fight. They really seem like 
foot fly is running around the ring, but uh, relatively even first round for two fighters being as busy as they were. Tough round of Very tough round of I give a slight edge to the right. Just feel it either round, especially his counterpunch. It was a little more crisp and a little more fit. They gave it a little care. How about even round of round of one? Let's again. I took my first I won allowance. Don't even go to the You the man. Show him who's the man. Why you the man? You the man. You the man, baby. Everything is the job. The job is off the right hand. Seven, two. Seven, two. In between rounds, Nick Durant, his instructions for Cassius Beloy were, you're the man. And I'm really wondering uh, what he was trying to say because uh, Malloy didn't seem to back off from Anton Gilmore, but Anton Gilmore certainly didn't seem intimidated at this point by the WBU champion. Gilmore's pro career started three years earlier than Malloy, back in April of 91. Malloy started in March of 94. Right drops in by Gilmore. By coming to you today from Wembley Stadium in Johannesburg, South Africa, already Tokyo Rose Ball along with Steve Farhood. Hope you're enjoying our show thus far. How to enjoy our first fight, which had a little uh, I call it a bad decision. All right, all right. I don't know. I don't know what these local judges and judges this fight on South Africa. I'm not sure what they look for. Anymore. Don't ask me what the score is. This fight. Except we know that a South African will win. This fight. That's right. No, no hometown for him. So halfway gone here in round number two. Anti Gilmore, white shot shorts with the blue stripe. Cassius Beloy, the champion in the multicolored stripe. Referee is Darrell Ribbing. Very active first round, tough one to score. Both fighters equally active here in round number two. For the most part, Arnie, Beloy is fighting the fight he wants to fight. There's quite a distance between them. I don't. I think there's a little bit too much distance between them because Beloy can't even reach Gilmore with his jab. But. In a boxing match, Beloy uh, will win. He's hit the right hand drops in over the top. I've never seen Beloy hurt, so we'll be interested to see what kind of chin he has here. We're in a storm from Anton Gilmore at the moment. Gilmore's punch is a two round house. That's one of the reasons Beloy was able to slip just about every punch that came after that round. Gilmore has the experience in the uh, distance. Anyway, he's been 10 rounds twice, 12 rounds once, winning two out of three of those. Lloyd being 12 rounds, one time when he beat Frankie Toledo Frank. for the title. Other than that, he's never been past eight. Coming near the end now, round number two. Good round for challenger, Anton Gilbert. Stop! Action from round number two. We're going to take a look at some of these shots that dropped in. There's yeah, that, that big the, overhand right, Steve. Uh, that was the big one. But, you know, he really did miss most of the ones after that. He had a really vulnerable there. He wasn't able to follow up. Well, as we begin round number three, Steve, I would say it's not exactly 
going according to plan for Malloy. Very uncharacteristically getting caught on the ropes in round number two uh, and a pretty good route for the challenger, Anton Gilmore. I gave it to Gilmore really based on that one punch. I mean, he uh, clearly uh, landed a clean power overhand right, and Malloy has to stay off the ropes. This is what he wants. Flash that jab, pump that jab, keep Gilmore off. He shouldn't get hit that much because Gilmore's punches are very wide. Six clean power shots. You can see why he has that low knock. Break, break, break really break dig up. into the ground break, break, break. with his feet and his legs and then turn. More more of a flashy, fast arm puncher. Doesn't sit down on his puncher. No, not at all. Relax, relax, relax. Well, hot dogging right now on the part of Beloy. Trying to take Gilmore out of his plan. Starting to use the ropes like not the way he got caught around number two, but he's doing that slide using the ropes to help him with this lateral motion and just when Gilmore comes in he slides alongside the ropes and is gone. Drops that uppercut in again with a sneak forward point out. Not sitting down on the punch. That's a dangerous punch to throw that right uppercut from long range. Just ask Buster Douglas who tried it against all of them. Yeah that's the example of Everybody forever. Forever. example. Yeah forever that will be the example. Interestingly enough about that particular example, Buster must have gotten away with it so much though because Break it, up. it had to be on a lot of tapes. They said they practiced it. They knew that was coming and he threw it from out there and apparently he got away with it with everybody up until that fight. So we're coming on the 10 second mark here in round number three. Very good round for the champion Cassius Beloy who's taking charge. South Africa. Stop. sit down his left foot was up in the air when he throws the punch you see it and lifting it, off the ground yeah, leaping left hook a la Floyd Patterson that left hook we saw what well, that chopping right not, not much on that but you see the accuracy of the blows as the head gets snapped back round number four of a scheduled 12 rounder for the WBU Super Bantamweight Championship champion Cassius Malloy in the multicolored shorts Anton Gilmore he's in the white with the blue stripe no knockdowns thus far in the fight and um, kind of even at this point on my scorecard Steve after three rounds but Malloy certainly taking control in round number three it looks it looks like his hand speed could end up being the difference his hand speed and his, his reach and his and his Really, his foot speed too, his mobility. You can see that it looks like he can get out of trouble anytime he wants just by spinning, by moving. He moves very well. And this is a guy with very long legs and very long arms. He's, he's going to be difficult for anybody to fight. And probably will end up, given his age, will end up, you know, a featherweight, if not a junior lightweight or a lightweight eventually. Only 22 years of age for the young boy. This is only his 16th professional fight. Coming in today, at a corrected 15-0. First defense, though, of the title that he won from Frankie Toledo. Gilmore, four years older. 
coming in at 21 and two, two draws, only six knockouts. They're more aiming for the body this round a little more, which of course is a great strategy against a fighter as skinny as Beloit. If he can cut off the ring and get on the inside. The one mistake that Beloit made earlier, laying on the ropes and trying to slip off them. No longer doing what he's on him. He'll slip side to side. Here he is staying stationary though on the ropes, allowing Gilmore to employ that strategy. Halfway gone in round number four. Gilmore should be all over Beloit when Beloit's against the ropes like this. Grab him, take away his arm, punch, his, punch him over. Work the body, pound the body, keep doing it. And then Beloit's legs will uh, slow down. You have to wonder though why Beloit wants to be stationary against those ropes. The only time that Gilmore can get to him is when he just sits there like that, Steve. That's right. The fighter who had such a good third round, Beloit is uh, very ineffective this round. It's a left hook sitting there. He lays flat on those ropes. Not where he wants to be. When he uses the ropes to slide side to side, it really makes it impossible to get to the right. Right. stationary. Or using the ropes to catapult himself. Off the ropes. But when he goes up against the ropes, he's square. And it's a lot easier whether you're punching to the body or head to land against the square. Starting to wonder whether he's throwing that left with no authority whatsoever at this point. Uh, speaking about the boy, he's got an injury. He's not throwing any jabs. Maybe on the inside. He's only throwing rights. Gilmore. That's why Gilmore is not landing on the inside as uh, the boy is. 
You're just taking too much time. Yeah. And then Belay has time to either cover up or answer or man two for one. Break it. Break it. Just about 40 seconds to go in round number five. Very good, fast round for the now Southpaw, Cassius Beloy. So whether lefty or righty thus far in this fight has established no jab whatsoever. And uh, appears to be catching all those body shots on his elbows. A lot of punches by Gilmore this round, but very little effective. Right. The lateral motion that we saw uh, in the first several rounds from Beloy is still together. Six, particularly in the second half of the round. Those long arms that were really negating the body work 
he puts those elbows down there and manages to protect his face and cover his ribs at the same time. When Baroy puts, you know, puts his elbows down there to protect, it's as if they go down to his knees. Walk back to the corner again with the challenger, Anton Gilmore. Steve, he's having pretty good rounds. Coming up, winning rounds. I don't know, I might disagree with you. I mean, I've been alternating rounds here. Give him Gilmore one round, two on the next. I think Gilmore, that round did enough to take it. Really? Yeah. Well, at least this way. One of us can be right. One is opposed to I'm just picking up. I'm just picking up. I'm just picking up. Halfway gone in our world title fight, Steve Farhood, how do you see it so far? I have uh, three rounds apiece, and I don't think you agree with me, Arnie. No, I've got it 4-1-1 for Cassius Malloy, but as we were talking between rounds, a lot of those rounds for me were very close. I just didn't think that Gilmore was just coming up a little bit short. But based on what we saw earlier today in the Willie Wise, Degon Tobella fight, uh, anything can happen with scoring. I'm glad I'm it. It seems like all the time I watch fighters call. Uh, announcers call fights. The two announcers always agree. That's no fun. Except Larry Merchant and Harold Letterman. Yes. Never, they never, never agree. agree. Almost a general principle. <laughs> We got Novella trying to get the referee Darrell Irving's attention, saying he's getting hit behind the head by Gilmore when they're in close on those clinches. Coming from that overhand right to a little bit too far outside. The punch is landing by Gilmore. Boy with two right hands in that exchange as well, but not much of an effect. You think Boy would want to land that right hand because of the swelling over the left eye of Gilmore? It would make sense. Maybe he'll go southpaw again, try to right. use, use the jab to close it. Gilmore's never been stopped. His, both of his losses coming by way of decision. His most recent loss back in March of 96 to Max Gomez losing a 12 round decision in the United States. That was his only time out of South Africa. Malloy's been on the road a little bit. He's been to Florida, of course, where he won the title from Frankie Toledo. He's been over to England. He fought in his third professional fight in Nevada, as well as New Jersey. So he's well traveled for where he been in 15 professional fights. Hands up, hands up! 45 seconds to go here. Very busy. He's been aggressive. Malloy seems content with the counter. He's done a decent job of countering. He hasn't taken any big shots this round. Tough fight to score on. It really is. Well, here's another round up for grabs. But right, if you go for aggressiveness, which a lot of judges do, there's no way. Right up, 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 right we come to the end of round number seven. Seven. Good right drops in by Gilmore, and it's like funny that came earlier in the round, late in the round, as you mentioned, Steve. Good punch drops in, and there it is. <laughs> right uppercut from the champion, Cassius Beloit. 
It's yeah. a matter of which punch you remember. Yeah. 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 Round number eight, we're still at 12, and what is turning out to be a very close affair between champion Cassius Beloy and Anton Gilmore in an oral South African world title fight. Barney, I did not like the way Beloy looked going back to his corner after that round. Let's see how his legs look this round. He looked real tired. Very winded, breathing very hard. Earlier in the fight, we thought perhaps something was wrong with his left hand. He wasn't using it, but now he's back in an orthodox stance and trying to shoot out the jab. I'm wondering whether the body attack if Gilmore has hurt the ribs. And also they were applying, uh, they were applying an ice bag for the boy's right shoulder in the corner. So let's take a look at it, well, perhaps what that's doing. Something doesn't seem 100% with Cassius Beloit. Right, come, get back. Referee Darryl Ribbing separates the two fighters, gave a warning near the end of round number seven for holding to the champion. The right drops in, followed by a left. Right, right. A lot more clinching now. Fighters kept up a pretty good pace Steve. up to this point. They're continuing a good pace. Oh, oh, right. Good luck, right combination. Back to Gilmore. Gilmore seemingly none worse for the wear. Did, did he flash your punches off? Oh, big oh, right uppercut. Right. And Gilmore right. really starting to take a pounding in there. You'd have to wonder what would happen if the way he really sat down on his shots. Arms that long, he would get unbelievable. You know, Tommy Hearns like that. Right! Flash yeah, your punches yeah. all fight long, right? Yeah. You can land by Deloitte. He is not going to be aggressive. So, uh, it's, it's tough to score some of these rounds. Well, with under a minute to go in this round, it's been all Deloitte so far. And he's really landing the big shots inside now. Gilmore. For the first time in this fight, in my opinion, really looks like shots are taking its toll. Best round thus far for the champion Beloit. Gilmore managing to get inside now, but not doing much when he gets there. I think he was clearly rocked by those shots. Seemed it, but he's still staying in Beloit's face. Still flying pressure, leading with left hooks to the body. But you know, he's getting counted on one. If Beloit can only spin off the ropes as Gilmore comes in, he's knocked down. Good round for the champion as we bump to the close of round number eight. Stop. Try to take a look at that eye. And but there's the right that started things going. And it looks like uh, Gilmore's head is on a, on a swivel as it bobbles around, left, right, back and forth. But, you, but you, as you mentioned, Steve, you can see that um, Beloy's feet aren't on the ground with <laughs> a lot of these shots. Yeah, those, those upper cuts are great punches for Beloit because he, has such, he gets such natural leverage. Round number nine, and champion Beloit coming off a very good round number eight, giving a pounding to Anton Gilmore, but as we were mentioning between rounds, you have to wonder what would happen if he actually sat down on his punches. A lot of those punches, his legs are off the ground as he's throwing them, almost leaping in. Bop. Bop. Clearly a slip. Gilmore goes down. It's Gilmore. He's in the white shorts with the blue stripe. He's the challenger. Cassius Beloy in the multicolored shorts. 
Malloy undefeated, 15-0 record, five knockouts. Gilmore 21-2, two, two draws coming into this fight. Never been stopped. Minute gone by here in the ninth round. This is scheduled for 12. Malloy's WBU Super Bantamweight title at stake. In what might arguably be the first all South African world title fight. <laughs> oh, they're off. Okay. Yeah. Funny thing about Beloy is that his jab has probably been his least effective punch in this fight. He has not done much damage with the jab. He's kind of just flicking it out there. And yet when he wants to, he's had it several times when he has used it, a very fast double jab. He's got very fast hands. And he seems content not to, right. not to use it. And you would think it would make this fight that much easier for him if he could, you know, use his reach advantage and just keep Gilmore at bay. Seems a lot of tall fighters love to fight on the inside. He's one of them. This is where he's done his best work, right here. And you wouldn't think that's where he should be. Well, he's got that fantastic uppercut, though. Which was a lot of he's certainly let Gilmore back into this fight. Both guys look right, pretty right. big there. Right hand. Malloy's been unable to put two big rounds back to back with Steve. Exactly right. I, the uh, up, seventh and eighth, the first two consecutive rounds I gave him in this fight. And, and, and again, <laughs> I gave the seventh round to Gilmore. Right. There Come you on, go. So that shows how the scoring is going to be on this fight. Under 20 seconds to go in the ninth round. We're starting to get into the distance area, a place where Beloy, this is only the second time in his career that he's been past eight. Right. And Gilmore, been 10 twice and 12 once. Stop. You want your title? You want your title? They give me fucking two rounds. Sometimes you score a fight and you say, oh, it's got to be this way. Judges have to see it this way. This is the kind of fight where you know the judges could see it a couple of times. Wake up! Absolutely. Neither fighter known for knockout power, so you can't really sit here and say, gee, somebody can take anybody out at any moment. Of course, that could still happen, but neither fighter known for that. Boy with only five knockouts in his 14 wins and Gilmore with six in his 21. What an invaluable experience of this boy. A young 22-year-old fighter going 12 hard, presumably 12 hard rounds against a strong, physically strong opponent. It's a great experience for him. Second defense of a title he won from Frankie Toledo back in November. And then he came over to the United States, went down to Florida and beat Toledo for that. Devastating, but I think Beloy has the edge this round. He, he's a little busier and landing a little higher percentage of his punches. Both fighters are very busy throughout the bout. 
big reach advantage though for Beloy and has also helped him block those body shots. His elbows, take a look where his elbows are. From all the way down to his waist. You mentioned Steve Adley enough to the best work he has done. On the inside, when you think we're going from the outside, we have to reach it now. The reason he's been effective inside is simply because his punches are straighter. When he throws those uppercuts, they're straight punches. Gilmore with that left hook and the overhand right, they just take too long to get there, and uh, they're a telegraph. And funny, in between rounds, you could sense a little bit of intensity in the corner of Beloy as Nick Durant was yelling at him, hey, do you want to keep your title? Do you want to keep your title? Yeah, it's a close fight. Break! Beloy really started to tie up now on the inside a lot more. Hit his couple of shots in and he never has any chance, as we see there, to, to launch any sort of attack. Making uh, the job for Dower ribbing a lot tougher than it was in the early going. Watch again, trying to get him to punch out. Stop! Put your hand down here. us no knockdowns thus far in the fight Anton Gilmore the challenger in the white shorts with the blue stripe champion Cassius Beloy in the multicolored shorts unofficially at this point I'm seeing the fight 98-93 for the champion Beloy break, it's break very, it very very close rounds and again break. Beloy holding on to holding. something he started the last several rounds Gilmore's been consistent. He's come forward the whole fight. He's got him on the ropes again, and very little effective punching by Gilmore. His shots just need to be straighter. It's that simple. Plus, he's eating a couple on the way in. And the ones he's eating are landing. Keep punching! You know what? When you throw roundhouse punches like Gilmore is, you need room. He's going to be ineffective on a close range like this because his right hand needs to be looped and his left hook is too wide. He has trouble landing. Wait. That punch you just saw by Gilmore has probably been his most effective punch. That left hook, lead left hook to the body, and the right goes against the Hey, for a fighter though with only 15 professional fights, the boy is showing a lot of praise and yeah, experience in the way he's starting to tie up Gilmore on the inside during these late rounds. The boy a totally different fighter than he was early on. He got the reds to move. Keep the fight Stop. in the ring Now it's getting a little sloppy. Hold it's sloppy because the boy can't move like he did. Now he's trying to move, but right back to the you know, we've had several theories throughout the fight. Beloit 
it still doesn't seem 100% right. Right. But we have been unable to pinpoint exactly what might be wrong. For a while we thought it might be his left hand, then perhaps his ribs. Just not really sure as we're coming to the end of round number 11. Coming up for the 12th right. and final round. Stop! It got three minutes to the world title. Three minutes, right? Okay. That's it. You didn't start. Punches in the middle. All the effort you guys did it. This is your. Can you put up a pin? You got three minutes. Landed some pretty good shots in a tough round again. The ball, Steve, was going to the final round. Lamar had the best punch that round. Great right punch. So, uh, four of the last five rounds. Great punch, guys. Great punch. That was a Twelfth and final round. The WBU Super Bantamweight Championship. Cash is below and Anton Gilmore. There have been no knockdowns in the fight. Very close scoring. It's funny, Steve. And, and he said, perhaps uncharacteristically for TV scoring. I've got, I gave the last round the 11th to Gilmore, you gave it to me. <laughs> but nevertheless, I've got Beloy winning the fight, 107-103 unofficially. And I have Beloy three points ahead, 106-103. So we're going to get to the same answer, just via different error. And the other thing, though, was in Gilmore's four between rounds, they said three minutes to the world title. Yeah. So they think that their fighter's winning the fight. There seems to be a little concern in the corner of Beloy from Nick Durant. Now taking a look at some loose tape. Referee Darrell Ribbing taking care of the loose tape on the glove of Anton Gilmore. Judging by what we saw in the corner of Gilmore, he must have saw a right of his mouth or his tongue or his body or something because he was spitting up a lot of blood. He's been doing it for a while. Left hook on the way the fighter doing much on the inside right now. Very tired. Aggressiveness deserves to be rewarded. It has to be effective aggressiveness. For the most part, I don't think Gilmore's aggressiveness has been effective. Oh, and a good left hook drops in there. Two shots right now, and it looks like Gilmore might be ready to go. Right. You know the old saying, don't hook with a hooker. Well, don't hook with the one because his hit is going to land first every time. Right, uppercut drops in there. Uppercut for the best punch to the fight. Champion Beloy. Gilmore just eating shots now for the sake of eating them. Can't get inside, can't score. And this fight, you know, again, even though we have Beloy comfortably ahead, it might really spin. Well, Beloy's winning the round, and I don't think there'll be a knockdown at this late date, but uh, Gilmore has to keep this a one point round. A very good 12th and final round for the champion, Cassius Beloy, who looks like at least unofficially in our sport. Gilmore's corner seems to think they've won the fight. Nick Durant left the Cassius Beloy up in his corner. And uh, very good. I wind up at 117-112 for the champion Cassius Beloy. 116-112, although I and I disagreed on a lot of ground, we end up with just about the same figure. But 
tell you, if Beloy loses this fight, you know what he's going to say. He's going to say, look at the other guy's face and look at my face. How can the other guy get the decision? Because Gal was really beaten up. Both eyes swollen, a little bit of purple. And I've got to say, good job, though, nevertheless, in the corner. Yeah, the fourth corner, keeping those eyes open as early as the third and fourth round. It looked like he might have some vision problems, and they did a good job with end swells in that corner, kept his eyes open. Not very marked up on the part of Anton, uh, excuse me, uh, Cassius Beloit, but as I was saying that, I was checking out his left cheek, which looks a little, little swollen, a little swollen. But good effort, though, by both guys. They threw an awful lot of punches. Uh, too bad the copy box boys aren't here, but I, I think uh, we're talking maybe close to a thousand punches. Man, it certainly looked that way. And, and, and at the same time, it was strange. I would love to have an answer from Beloit as to why he went into that momentary for a whole round southpaw. Yeah. Unexplained, which led us to believe that maybe, in fact, he had hurt his left hand, which we thought earlier in the fight wasn't jabbing very much throughout the fight. Uh, did take a body beating in the middle rounds. The, uh, the only thing, Arnie, I could think of, maybe he was thinking that Gilmore's right eye was swelling, and you could reach that right eye a lot easier with a southpaw jab as opposed to fighting more. That's the, only, that's the only thing I can think of. Well, perhaps we'll be able to find out. We're awaiting the official decision, and we're coming off a, uh, a very strange decision, at least that in terms of how Steve Gilmore and myself saw that between Degon Pomeller and Willie Wise earlier in our show. When the, uh, when the decision's announced, I'm going to close my eyes and cover my ears. You tell me later. Okay? <laughs> I can't. I, after the first fight, I'm, I'm a little scared to listen. They're taking a lot of time with the cards. Yeah, that usually means uh, either a split or a draw or something. All right. right. We go. We'll throw a ring announcer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, our judges score the fight as follow. Judge Elf Bukwana scores the fight 116 to 113. Judge Goldberg 116 to 112. And Judge Tekaletsi 115 to 113. Our winner by unanimous points decision, Mr. Shy Guy. Cassius Beloy. And he's still the WBU Super Bantamweight Champion of the World. Well, assuming you had your ears open, Steve, you <laughs> had it exactly the way you had it. I believe 116, 112. Another judge had it 116, 113. One had it 115, 113. I had it 117, 112. So we're pretty much on the money. And Cassius Beloy remains the WBU Super Bantamweight Champion, improving to a record of 16 and 0. Of course, remains at five knockouts. There's his WBU belt. Anton Gilmore will drop down to 21 and three, two draws. Still remains having never been stopped, and we're going to see if we can get a few words right now okay. from the champion. Nick, Nick Durant, Cassius Beloy, you're you're the winners. You've kept the title. Are you happy with the decision as it went? Yeah, sure. I believe we did enough to keep the title. Um, I must take my hat off to Anton. He really came in shape. He gave us a very tough fight. But those are the kind of fights we need out there. Um, from the sixth round, Cassius had cramps in his legs, and that was the problem tonight. Um, but I'm not taking anything away from Anton Gilmore. He showed true heart, he showed guts, and uh, you know, at the end of the night, my fighter walked away with the title. We're glad we, we kept the title. Um, but, you know, for Anton Gilmore, it's not over. I believe he's got a long future ahead. I mean, he gave us a very tough fight. Well, he gave you a tough fighter right now. He came roaring at you right at the beginning of the fight, and he kept the pressure on. Did you expect him to do that? Yeah, I expected that, Leonard. You know, you could see the first three rounds we won comfortably. Um, but going to the fourth, fifth, Cass is not a companion about his legs. And from the sixth or seventh onwards, his legs were giving him problems with cramps. So that was uh, possibly what had what uh, caused it to go so close to the fight. But uh, yeah, he's got a lot of a champion. He stayed in there. I mean, every round he was complaining to me about his legs. And, yeah. and, you know, so well, well, we said actually in the commentary that you, you were bouncing around using the ring so well in the first few rounds. But we noticed from about the, the fifth, sixth round onwards cramps. that you were actually... Uh, you weren't moving very much in the ring, you were stalking. And we wondered why, what had happened then. I was cramps in my legs, because I turned the round for this fight. So I gave Anton a, 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 a big hand, because he gave me a, a good fight. He's a great boxer. Uh, in future, he will be a champion, but not in my time. Well, the big thing is, 
you've come out the winner. That's the most important thing of all. You're still the world champion. Congratulations on that. It was a good fight. It was a good, grueling, tough fight. Yeah, nice right. work, Cassius. Thanks so much. All right, and there you have it. Cassius Beloy, of course. Now we know why they call him Shy Guy. Not doing much talking, leaving it to Nick Durant. Uh, talk, though, about those leg cramps, which explains why the lateral motion wasn't there, but nevertheless keeps his WVU Super Bantamweight title, improving to 16-0. and Anton Gilmore dropping down to 21-3-2. and Earlier in the day, of course, a controversial decision win for Willie Wise from New York, beating Degon Novella. So it was a great show. Here's some stellar performances. So for the Cedric Kushner Sports Network and for Steve Farhood, I'm 